Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick and in today's video I'll be guiding you through a practical method for creating minimalistic designs specifically for 3D printing. We'll start by utilizing OpenAI's Dolly Image Generator to craft a sleek minimalistic design. Then we'll vectorize that design using free open source software. Finally we'll import that vectorized image into Bamboo Studio to prepare it for printing. I know this might sound a bit complex especially if you're not tech savvy but don't worry I'll guide you through every step. So let's dive in and enhance those 3D printing skills. I don't want to make this video about AI prompt creation, so I prepared a few example prompts that help me achieve the results we need. These prompts are easy to copy, modify, and execute with just a few tweaks. One of the great things about using Dolly is that OpenAI offers it for free, unlike some of the other tools like Midjourney, which may give excellent results but comes with a cost. For my purposes, I find that Dolly works well enough, so I'll stick with that. Let's start by heading over to chatgpt.com and logging in. I won't go into the details of creating an account, let's just assume you've already done that. Once you've logged in, you should see a blank chat ready for you to input your prompts. I've created two different prompts, both of which you'll find in the video description below. The first prompt is for generating organic images like trees, animals, and dinosaurs. The second is for hard surface objects like robots, buildings, and cars. These prompts should cover most of what you want to create, but feel free to adjust them as needed to suit your specific project. Let's begin with the organic prompt. The hard surface prompt will follow a similar structure so you can easily switch between the two as needed. The organic prompt goes as follows. Create a minimalistic one color icon of a, we insert our object name, in a solid black and plain white background. The design should be simple and bold using insert style details here to represent a natural form of the object. Avoid gradients, shading, and fine details focusing on clean lines. The icon should be insert your symmetry preference here to enhance the insert your look element here centered and well balanced with ample white space surrounding it. Use negative space creatively to add depth to the design making it scalable and easy to vectorize. No text or lettering should be included. And that's the end of the prompt. So in this prompt you'll need to customize the four elements the object, the style details, the symmetry preference, and the overall look. Since we're focusing on organic shapes, you might choose something like a leaf, a dinosaur, or a fish. For this example, I'll use a velociraptor in an attack stance as the object. I am also giving AI additional context by including the position of the velociraptor. If there's one thing to take away from this video about AI, it should be that providing context will always give you better results. Okay, next is the style details. I'll choose smooth curves to encourage Dolly to produce a fluid, natural shape. For symmetry, I'll choose asymmetrical to keep the design dynamic. And finally, the overall look, I'll go with organic to match the subject matter. I encourage you to experiment with these elements to see what you can create. The possibilities are endless, and this prompt is just a starting point. Now, since the hard surface prompt follows the same principles, I won't go over it in detail. All right, let's go ahead and drop our prompt into ChatGPT and see what it gives us. Paste the prompt into ChatGPT and click the up arrow to run it. The AI will start generating an image based off of the input prompt. Okay, this is a good start, but what we can do is make adjustments. Now click on the image and it will open up a new window with an enlarged version of your image. If you click on the select tool, it will give you ways to adjust parts of your image. First, highlight the sections you want to make adjustments to. Then over here on the right hand side you can tell the AI what you would like to do with that section. Let's try something like make this section solid black to connect the body and hit enter. It will run that prompt against your highlighted area. Okay so it didn't quite give me what I was looking for but it's actually a cool improvement so I'll just leave it at that. Now the next part that is bothering me is this arm. I'm going to highlight it and tell the AI to connect the arm to the body and run it again. All right, great. Now we're making some progress. The next thing I want to do is fix this claw. So I'll highlight this section again and tell AI to connect the claw to the hand and see what happens. Okay, great. Now that's fixed as well. But what if we wanted to just start completely over and see what the AI can give us? Let's go ahead and try it and see if we can get something better. Close this window out and go back to the main prompt area. I'm going to tell the AI to generate another variation using my original prompt. Now remember that context is always going to give you better results. But I'm curious to see what the other options the AI is going to give me. Let's hit enter to rerun it. Okay, so the AI decided to give me two options to pick from. 
I have a feeling that since I didn't give it additional context, it simply was trying to give me some options to choose. Now let's go ahead and tell it to generate more variations and please make this more aggressive. And yes, I do like to say please in my prompts. <laughs> let's hit enter and hopefully I get something that I like. All right, now this is really cool. It's almost perfect. Let's go ahead and make a few adjustments. I'm not really liking these spikes on the back, so I'm going to highlight that section and tell AI to remove it, as well as remove this shadow at the bottom. Let's hit enter and see what happens. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I'm going to make a few additional adjustments, but I'm going to fast forward the video footage, as I think you get the idea of how this works. So first I try to make the foot solid black. That didn't really turn out how I wanted, but I'm just going to leave it. Then I wanted to make the transition smoother from the neck to the back. And last, I smoothed out the outer circle to get rid of that odd section. All right, I think this is perfect, so now I'm going to save this file to my desktop. Click this down arrow button and you're ready to move on to the next step. Now let's go ahead and convert it into a vector format. You have two options here. The first is VTracer by Vision Cortex, a web app that you can find at visioncortex.org forward slash VTracer. This tool offers a quick way to convert the image from an SVG format, although you won't be able to make any design adjustments. If you're happy with the DALI output, VTracer is a great option to quickly move you on to the next step. To get started, open your file in VTracer. Under the clustering options on the right, set it to BW if it isn't already. Spline curve fitting will give you the smoothest result, and you can adjust the corner threshold and the splice threshold settings to achieve the desired results. Once you're satisfied, download the image as an SVG and you're ready to move on to Bamboo Studio. The second option is Inkscape, a free vector graphics editor available at inkscape.org. After downloading and installing the software, you'll need to convert your image from a WebP format to JPEG. You can do this quickly by using Windows Paint or your operating system's default image editor, and then go up to File and then Save As a JPEG. Or as your second option, you can simply open up the WebP file and screenshot it with the Print Screen button so it's loaded into your clipboard. Once you've opened up Inkscape, paste the image and prepare to trace it. Another option would be to open up your converted JPEG. Go up to File, Open. Search for the JPEG that you saved from Windows Paint and click Open. A pop-up window will appear. Just make sure you select Embed, From File, and Smooth, and then click OK. A new Inkscape window will open up and your file will be loaded. The first thing we need to do is make sure you have your image selected. Move your mouse over to the middle and left click on your mouse. Navigate to Path and then Trace Bitmap. Next, let's go ahead and adjust the preview window for better visibility. Click right here on the three dot button and drag it to the left. Now let's fine tune the settings like threshold, speckles, and smoothing to achieve a clean trace. I usually adjust speckles up a quarter of the way and smooth corners and optimize to around the middle. This may take you a few tries, but I'll show you how you can quickly retrace your object until you get a nice clean shape. Once your settings are adjusted, hit the apply button. It won't look like anything happened, but if you click on your object and drag, you will now see that it has been traced and no longer has a background. If you see any discrepancies, just hit delete on the keyboard. Now re-click your image and try again by adjusting your settings and hitting apply until you get what you want. Once you're happy, simply select the original bitmap image and hit delete on the keyboard to remove it. Next, click and drag to center your vector image. Now let's save it and import it to the slicer. Click File, Save As, and give it a name and make sure the Save As type is set to SVG and hit Save. Alright, with these steps completed, you're ready to bring the design into Bamboo Studio for 3D printing. Alright, so once you have Bamboo Studio open, the first thing you're going to do is open up your SVG file. Up here in the top, click Open, find your file, and then click Open. Now before we move any further, let's go ahead and break up all these pieces. I would definitely like to remove that one leg that didn't turn out so well. Move your mouse up here to the toolbar and hit the button that says split to objects. Once you do that, every piece that's separate will now be a separate object. Now I can select the leg and delete it by pushing delete on the keyboard. 
Let's go ahead and put some variation in height by selecting our raptor and then going to scale and then changing the height. Let's say something like 15. Now we have this crescent moon that's 10 millimeters high and the raptor is now 15 millimeters high, giving us a little variation in height. Now before we slice this, let's go ahead and turn some ironing on so we get a nice top smooth surface. Down here in the ironing settings, click top surfaces. You can leave all the settings as default and then let's go ahead and slice it. I like to just check real quick. And now we're ready to send it to the printer. Now real quick while your printer's heating up, if you're having an issue with bed adhesion, sometimes I'll have problems with files like this. I found that taking some cheap hairspray and just hitting your build plate real quick with it, let it dry, and that usually does the trick. If you haven't yet, try it out and see if it works for you. Once a Velociraptor was printed, my daughter was there to check it out. I could see the wheels turning in her eyes. She quickly asked if I could make her a unicorn. And of course I said yes. So I sat down with her and we went through the AI prompt. She wanted her unicorn to be flying, so we added unicorn flying peacefully as our object description. We left the rest of the prompt the same as the Velociraptor and immediately spit out a perfect object. I quickly ran it through Inkscape to convert it and imported it into Bamboo Studio. I thought I would give you guys some additional workflow because I'm going to make this into more of a keychain emblem and she's going to attach it to her backpack. I'm going to quickly run through the workflow so that maybe you can pick up a few ideas for yourself. Once I imported the unicorn into Bamboo Studio, I scaled it down a little bit. Next, I wanted to place it on top of a flat cylinder to give all the separated parts a combined surface for strength. Since this is going to be hanging from her backpack, it's definitely going to endure some abuse. I thought that a slightly smaller surface would look cool so that the unicorn would protrude outside of it, giving it some variation. Next, I needed to secure the horn. So I added another cylinder but gave it more of an oval shape so that it would follow the shape of the horn. Next, I added a negative part so I can cut a hole into the top where it would be perfect to fit a keyring through. After slicing the model, I decided to make some more adjustments. I moved the hole down a little bit on the model to give it some more strength. Next, I added her name to the model to make it more personalized for her. I made a few more adjustments to the oval behind the horn as it didn't look quite right to me. After that, I made sure to turn on ironing to top surfaces. Once that was complete, I merged all the parts together to uniform the individual objects, giving it a more solid wall around the entire design. After that, I did one last check of the model to make sure that everything looked good. I just wanted to make sure all the objects were merged together correctly for printing. The model was now ready to send to the printer. And here are the two completed prints. I hope that I was able to open your eyes to new ways to bring the power of AI and 3D printing together. You can take what I've taught you here and come up with an unlimited amount of designs to create. If you add multicoloring to these, it will be even better. This method is merely scratching the surface of what you can do with AI in 2024. I'm excited to see where this technology leads us, and I'll be delivering more videos on combining AI and 3D printing. I would also like to thank all the subscribers to my channel for the great support. I am putting in a ton of time to produce the highest quality content that I can and will continue to do so. Alright, I hope you all are having a great day and happy printing.